Hi, in this video I have a Speed Queen model LWS 11NW and the problem with this is it's not filling up with water correctly. For example, I'm going to put it on the cold and I'm going to allow it to turn on and notice that stream is very low. It's not giving me enough of the cold water. For example, if I change over to the hot water, there's the hot water stream and you can see how the hot water is coming out nicely but the cold water is coming out slowly and normally you would have even more pressure with the cold water so i'm going to demonstrate how i solve this problem all right so make sure the power's off i'm going to unplug it from the supply turn your taps off now i need to get to the solenoids the inlet valves which are over here and i also need to remove these pipes so i'm going to release these pipes you might find they're quite tight if you haven't released these in a long time right now i need to open this this is a size 8, just remove the screw, right, you can see these protrusions coming through here, so I need to push it inwards and up, and it comes out, Then I'll pull it out like that, and there you can actually see the solenoid. Now in this case, I want to remove this completely, so I can unplug these power cables over here, over here, Notice the one on the bottom is the hot and there's an H there and this is a C for cold and there's just a plain colored connector. Now I do need to release this pipe over here. It's also got a clamp. Right, you can just use a screwdriver to loosen it. Open the clamp quite a bit so that it can move over the little hump there. And since this has been here for a long time, it might be a bit tight uh, and I just twist and it should come out. There we go. Just keep twisting and there it comes out. If you are unable to release this clamp, say for example it was like that and you can't get a screwdriver to it, try and twist this but it's probably very tight. What you could then do is use long nose pliers just to loosen this clamp so that you could twist it round to unscrew it. Right, so I'm removing the old solenoid. Now keep this, this is useful. I'm inserting this back inside here what it does, it stops the pipe from deforming. Right, so here is the old unit, here's the replacement unit. I'm replacing it with a generic, so it's not exactly the same, which means that there might be some trouble when it comes to lining up the screw holes here. I'm going to now remove the old one and then use the same plate and install the new replacement unit. What I do need to do is remove these two fastening screws. There's one there and one there, and it does have a hex head, so you could use a hex socket, but the problem is it's a size 6.5, which is an uncommon size, so I'm just going to use a flat screwdriver. Okay, so here's the replacement, there's the old one, and if I put the replacement here, it fits fine. The only problem is the screw holes do not line up. So there is a hole there that lines up, but the screw holes are not lining up. So I have to make a decision here. Either I'm going to place it exactly in the center and possibly drill new holes, or use this hole here, but then opt for a nut and bolt option rather than a screw. I would still need to drill another hole on the other side, but at least one is already in place. So in this case, I'm going to use the hole that's there and I'm gonna use a nut and bolt, but I will have to drill another hole over here to make sure that it's held in place firmly. So just inspecting this faceplate, you can see that they've actually put a lot of holes here to make it easy and versatile for different machines. But in this case, my plate only has three holes. So that's why I'm gonna to have to drill through this plate. So it's better to drill through this plate rather than this one. This is thicker. So I'm going to just mark off where the hole is. So I'm just going to put that screw in there to hold that in place. And what I'm going to do is just get this straight and I'm gonna use the one on the top. Right, so I just need to drill a hole over here. One could use self-tapping screws, it's just that one has to be careful because on this side one can actually cut themselves when they are fastening the pipes. Right, so I'm gonna be using three millimeter screws. So I'm just using a four millimeter drill bit so that it does have a little bit of room to move. Right, so I'm just drilling into the faceplate now. Now, because these are two metallic surfaces, they are susceptible to noise as they vibrate. What I normally do, is just take a little bit of double-sided tape here just to make sure that it doesn't make any noise. Right, so I just have some double-sided tape there and I'm now going to mount these sides. Right, so I'm just lining up the holes. There's the one hole and there's the other hole. I'm now going to put the screw through here. One, there's the screw. You can use a washer if you're worried about vibration. And there's the nut. Right, I'm not making it tight until I fasten the other side. There's the screw. 
but I just make sure that it's straight and I can fasten it. I noticed that there are some sharp points here from the way it was originally done. I'm just filing it down. I don't want anyone to cut themselves. This is the through holes from the original design. Right, that's no longer sharp. Right, before I install the replacement unit, this is also susceptible to noise and vibration. You often hear it going zzz, zzz, zzz. So I'm just going to put some tape there and there and then just over here. Right, so here's some double side tape, but I have only opened the one side. I'm using the tape for dampening. So this frame is going to rest on this spongy tape and it's not going to make that noise. Over here at the top, I've put the tape, but as I've said, I'm not opening this side. I don't want to stick it in there. For this thing, yes, I stuck both sides because this is installed for keeps. But if I stick this down, it's going to be very hard for the next person to work. All I'm trying to do is make sure that it's damped. I have covered the screw hole here, but it's not a problem because when I put the screw in there, it'll just break through the tape. Right, I just have the spout from the old one here, and I'm just going to show you the thickness of the spout, 12.5 millimeters. Now on the generic, it is 10.2, which is actually too thin, but it does have this little plastic piece on it. And uh, if I measure with the plastic piece, call it 13. So I'm going to have to leave this on, otherwise it's not going to fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this piece here. If you haven't got this piece, then it's fine. You could just install yours directly, as long as it is a tightish fit. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to install this now. Sometimes it's quite difficult to get a pipe onto a pipe. A technique is to just wet this a bit. Right, so I've just wet that. And now I'm going to slide this one on top. And it goes on actually quite easily. And now I just need to get this into here. Uh, also, I can just wet this a bit. Right, so just remember to put your clamp back on. And now it's time to insert this pipe onto that pipe. Now, just a note, if your pipe has fatigued a bit, you could cut maybe one or two centimeters as long as the remaining pipe is still long enough. So you could cut two centimeters here, then you're using fresh pipe instead of the deformed pipe. In my case, it's already making perfect contact, so I'm not going to cut the pipe. So I haven't fastened this clamp yet, but I can already see it's quite tight here. So this is going to work very well. All right, so the next step is to just uh, connect the connectors. Now I've noticed inside these connectors, they're looking a little bit corroded. Some moisture's obviously evaporated and got in here. I'm just going to use a contact cleaner. This just helps reduce the oxidation. So I'm just gonna do a little spray in each one of these. If you haven't got a contact cleaner, it's fine. You can just reinstall. Now on the face plate, the hot is this one and the cold is this one. So I must do the same on this side. Remember that the hot was the red, so I can just plug it in. It doesn't matter which way it goes because this is just a coil inside of this solenoid. That's what makes up the solenoid, right? So there's the cold, the hot, uh, the connections are good. Right, so before I tighten this, I must get this in the correct orientation. So it must be like this and then I tighten it. Otherwise, it's going to put unnecessary pressure on the pipe if I tighten it and then twist it to get it inside. Right, now it's time to fasten that clamp and then reinsert this. So these come out there. I pull this towards me and that's where the screw's going to be. Right, so I'm just screwing it in and pulling this towards me at the same time and then it catches. Often you find that when once this has been removed, it'll go bzz, bzz, but not with that dampening I've put on. Right, now it's time to reinsert the hoses. Uh, this is a good time to change the rubber washers that are inside here. Sometimes they are totally caked in. In this case, this is a rubber washer with a little filter. Right, just inspecting this. It's still in good condition. It's still pretty rubbery. So I'm just going to reuse the old ones. But if yours are needing replacement, consider replacing them. I must make sure I get the hot pipe to the hot terminal over here. Right, you just hand tighten these. Right, now I just inspect the cold one. Uh, this filter is actually not clean. It's got some little sediment in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just scraping it out and I'm going to run some water through it in the reverse direction just to remove the sediment. Right, so the sediment has been removed and now I can reinsert this. Right, so you make sure that it's all dry around there and now what I need to do is turn on the water while it's like this just to check if there's any leaks. Right, so I'm just turning on the water. So inspecting here, there is no water here. I run my finger around here and there is its bone dry. So now I can put the machine back in place. Right, so I'm going to first do a cold test. I've turned the machine on. That's a good stream. Right, now that is the hot water. So the machine is now fixed.
Sometimes it's worthwhile to open the solenoid and one can actually fix it. In this case, there was definitely some damage and it was not worth to repair. And that is why it was only opening partially and only allowing a little bit of water. So in this case, it was worthwhile to just replace the solenoid. Thanks for watching and cheers.